How well do you know the internet? Until two weeks ago, I thought I knew it pretty well. After all, I spend a good chunk of my day browsing Reddit and 4chan, and I'm always up to date with the latest memes and circle jerks. I've been a denizen of the internet since the early days of Fortune City pages and IRC channels, and I've been a regular ever since. Then, about a year ago, somebody introduced me to the Shadow Web. A sort of secret layer of the internet that you will never find by googling or looking up message boards. There are no in-links from the surface web to the shadow web. And no, this is not the deep net, in case you were thinking about that. Not just some website with gore videos of freak accidents. I've seen plenty of those. I assure you, this is something far more twisted. I never asked what his name was. He was a regular who came to the gas station where I worked as an attendant last year. Every time he came in, he would buy twenty to fifty dollars worth of Ucash vouchers, which I assumed were for porn subscriptions. I think it was a combination of his beige polo shirt and receding hairline that gave off the creepy pervert vibe. One day. He asked for three hundred dollars of Ucash vouchers, and I made the mistake of raising the question: "What for?" Have you ever heard of the Shadow Web? I remember him asking me casually as he counted three hundred from a wad of twenty-dollar bills. I hadn't, so I shook my head. Then, he looked through his wallet. And withdrew a little slip of paper, one about the size of a credit card. If you want to find out, he whispered. He leaned towards me, and slid the piece of paper into my chest pocket. I gave him his vouchers. He left, and I never saw him again. Not long after, I left the job to return to school. It wasn't until a couple weeks ago that I came across the old. Yellowy uniform with a piece of paper still in the front pocket. When I opened it up and read its contents, I immediately recalled my encounter with the creepy customer. The piece of paper had instructions on how to get to the gateway of the shadow web. There were a lot of steps, some more sophisticated than others. Unfortunately. I was both tech savvy and curious enough to follow them. The first thing you'll want to know about the shadow web is that you do not want to go there. I've seen plenty of fucked up things on the internet, but nothing comes remotely close to the things I saw on the shadow web. Thinking back, I should have noped the fuck out the instant I saw the front page. I don't know why I hadn't. Maybe something's wrong with me. When I got to the gateway page, which resembles one of those welcome pages that pops up when you use free Wi-Fi at an airport or at a mall, the first thing I noticed was the word "corpse fucking." It was underneath a search field among 30 or so other words, which I assumed were the most commonly looked up things on the shadow web. Things like skinning and mutilation. That should have been my cue to X out then and there. There were a lot of other things too, other than just graphic gore footage and sexual content. Things like instructions on how to make do-it-yourself roadside bombs. Things like a Craigslist for cannibals, and people who wanted to be eaten alive by cannibals. Things like a marketplace to buy and sell stolen identities, either individually or in bulk. I spent almost an hour reading up on leaked war documents and diplomatic cables on a subsite of the shadow web. The website looked very retro, if you know what I mean. The layout had frames, and each frame had its own scroll bar. When I found myself clicking on links without thinking twice, I realized I had become comfortable on the shadow web. 
Don't ask me how I came across this next website. Curiosity got the better of me, and I clicked on things I shouldn't have. I'll spare you the actual name of the site because I know some of you will make the same mistake that I did, thinking it can't be that bad. It can. When I got there, I noticed the Ucash logo at the bottom of the page, indicating that paid services were available. It was, in fact, a live webcam show. But you only paid if you wanted to be the director. Viewing was free. Beneath the live feed of a webcam was the login page to a chat room. It prompted me for a screen name when I clicked on the join button. So I just bashed my keyboard like I always do when commenting on anonymous sites. As soon as I got past the login, a torrent of messages flooded the screen. Most of the messages were in English, a few Japanese, and I think some were Arabic or Farsi. The number of participants in the chat room fluctuated between 150 and 200 people. But that's only the number of people who bothered entering the chat. I suspect many more were watching anonymously. The majority of legible messages were start or go, 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 or something to that effect. After about a minute, a man with his face hidden behind a hockey mask appeared on the feed. I remember him having dark brown skin and being really skinny, like starving Ethiopian skinny. Shortly after that, everyone was set on mute. Everyone except for one user by the name of Italian Goat, who I figured was the director of this show. That's when the screaming began. She was blindfolded and tied to a wooden chair with her hands behind her back. A larger, darker man dragged her by the hair until she sat dead center on my screen. I watched her try to struggle free from the ropes. But she was so tightly fastened that you could see the bruising. God knows how long she had been tied up like that. Finally, the bigger man took the blindfold off, and she stopped screaming. When she looked into the camera, she seemed to realize what was about to happen. She started crying and begging the two men in what I think was Arabic. Then a message popped up on the chat. It was from Italian Goat. We're sideways on the floor. The director issued his first command. The skinny man saw the message and related to the larger man in their own language. Kick her in the stomach. The skinny man continued with his translations. Kick her in the face. The screaming grew louder and louder. What the fuck was I watching? That was it for me. I reached for my cell phone, ready to dial 911. Stop on her tits. Tell your friend to kick harder. I paid good money for this. I was in so much shock at this point that I couldn't take my eyes off the screen. The kicking went on for another 10, 20, 30 seconds. It seemed as if it went on forever. Now, slit her throat. When I read that last message, the churning feeling in my guts intensified. No, 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 no. I kept thinking, somebody stop this. I tried to type into the chat, but the input field was grayed out. The woman cried even louder when she heard the man relay the last request. Wait. No, not yet. The skinny man held up one hand to signal to his partner to halt. My breathing returned to normal for a second, thinking that the woman was going to be spared, at least for the time being. Then the director continued. Take out her eyes first. The skinny man stared directly into the webcam. I couldn't see the entirety of his face, just his eyes and the small patch of skin around each one. In his eyes, 
I searched desperately for the slightest hint of hesitation. Please, put a stop to this, I prayed. But I kept the mouse cursor hovered over the close button in case they did not. And then, the skinny man began typing, and a second screen name popped up in the log. Admin. Another 500. My mind froze when I saw the number. 500. This woman was being tortured and possibly killed for a meager sum of $500. I was making as much every other week at the gas station, and I was barely making minimum wage. If I could offer $1,000 to stop this, I would. I would empty out my savings if it meant I could save her life. I would, I swear on my life. I'd pay anything to stop this madness. But it was too late. Okay, do it. I quickly shut off the screen before I could see any more. I wish my common sense would have kicked in earlier. I ran out to the yard where I regurgitated about two meals worth of vomit. It had been a long time since I felt sick from watching something. The last time was when I was in junior high and some friends showed me a clip from Rotten.com. It was the one where a man had his skull sliced in half by the rotor blades of a helicopter he was in the midst of repairing. And then, over the years, I've seen many more videos like that, enough that I don't get the urge to puke in my mouth anymore. But let me tell you this. Seeing live footage of a real person being tortured is stomach-turning on a whole different level. When I was done spitting out the last bits of bile in my mouth, I heard screaming coming from my room. It was then that I realized that in my haste to turn off the monitor, I had forgotten to turn off the speakers as well. Her screams grew worse and worse, until finally I was able to reach behind the desk and disconnect the speakers from the computer. The silence that followed was unbearable. It was as if, by my own hands, I had silenced her. Killed her. I felt remorse such as I have never felt before. I killed her. I thought to myself again and again, I killed her. The feeling was unreal. I had to find out if she was alive. As I reached over to turn the screen back on, a voice inside my head begged me to stop. I don't want to see what I'm about to see. But before I could stop myself, my hand had already acted. The image on the screen was an image I will never, ever forget. The severed head of the woman sat there straight across from me, both eyes missing from their respective sockets. That face, that warped, misshapen face, has haunted me ever since. Even now as I write this, I can feel her hollow eyes glaring at me from behind me. I sleep with all the lights on, the TV on, but nothing helps. Right before I shut down the browser and reconfigured the network settings to access the good old regular internet, I remember seeing one last line on the chat. It read, Admin. Thank you for watching. The next show will be in one hour.